What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream. Today, we'll be reviewing the brilliant victory yesterday for Arsenal as we battered West Brom 4-0. Um, we'll be talking about what was said in the press conference. We'll also get into the player ratings as well. You guys can give me your feedback on the game. And where we're at, apologies, I was slightly late. Um, it wasn't the charger, as someone said, it's the charger. <laughs> Um, I just had an issue um, with the light actually um, wasn't wasn't working. I've got that to work now. So we're underway. Um, hope everyone's well on this Sunday. I will be doing my first non Arsenal live stream today. Um, a lot of people have been asking for me to do other teams as well. So today, 4.15, I will be doing Chelsea against Manchester City. So Come and join me for that. Let's see how that goes. Obviously, I do want to expand the channel, you know, make it bigger and better. And, uh, you know, I will be doing that. So let's see how that goes today. Great victory for the Gunners yesterday. Three wins in a row. I would say that was our best performance of the season against West Brom. I know West Brom, let's be honest, I do think West Brom are a poor team. I do think they will get relegated. And I think they probably made a mistake in getting rid of Bilic. Um, you know, he's, he's got that team promoted. And, um, you know... I think they got rid of him way too quick. And I think big Sam Allardyce, mate, I think he's bitten off more than he can chew there. You know, there were rumours that Allardyce wanted the game called off yesterday. Um, it was a great interview on AFTV yesterday with Lee Judges. He said, I was more scared of the snow than I was of West Brom. And, and I agree with him. You know, at one stage, I'm sitting there thinking this game could get called off, you know. Um, but we got away with it. And what a great performance. Listen, we can always point at the opposition, but you still have to beat them. You know, you still have to beat them. And we beat them convincingly. Um, <laughs> did you eat before the stream? Oh, apologies, people. Yesterday, man, I ate my dinner just before the stream. And I had to drink water like every 20 minutes, man. Indigestion was kicking in. So, um, listen, I'm all good today. No dinner yet, man. Dinner's cooking, though, man. Some chicken's cooking. Don't worry. Uh, big up, see. What do you think of Arsenal making the top four? Well, I still think we're a long way off. I still think we've got a long way to go in order to think about getting in that top four. But we've given ourselves some sort of possibility, you know, some sort of possibility. That's all I can say. Um, I would agree, Abby. I think it was a five star performance. Um, I think you can only beat what's in front of you. Um, but we can't we can't get carried away. That's why I put in the title, best performance of the season, but still a long way to go. Um, and I agree with that. I think we've got a long way to go. So let's briefly look at the team and, and the stats yesterday. Chuck in the comments what you think about the player ratings as well um, and whether you agree with what I'm giving. Obviously, Arsenal... 1-4-0, Tierney, Saka, Lacazette with the goals. Uh, this is Sky's highlights. You look at the stats, a truly dominant performance. You know, Arsenal, 21 shots on goal um, with 12 on target, you know. 62% possession, 623 passes played in the game, 374 for West Brom, 82% pass accuracy, we were by far, far and away the better team yesterday uh, and we dominated. But this this is what counts at the end of the day. It's this Premier League table, you know, and we've still got a lot of ground to make up to get anywhere near where we need to be. This is why I did still put a slightly more, you know, negative look, if you like, on the whole situation. I know we won the game. I know it was a great performance, but we're still a long way off where we need to be. You look at this Premier League table. We're still 11th. You know, we're still not on that top page. When you scroll down, you know, it's only the top 10 that gets shown. And if you look at our form here, you know, three wins and a draw in our last five is much better. But we're on 23 points. Liverpool are on 33. I said this yesterday, I think we had to win those three games just to even be in with a chance. I don't think that three-win run has, you know, put us back in the mix. I think it's just given us a chance of getting back in the mix. Do you know what I'm saying? If you look at it, we've still lost more games than we've won this season. Eight defeats, seven wins. 
is still not good enough. Let's not, you know, get clouded with emotion. 20 goals scored. Every single team above us has scored more goals than us. Every single one. You've also got to take into account, I hope you don't think I'm being too negative here. I'm just trying to add some perspective to it. Southampton, City, every team here, apart from Leicester who are playing now, has got at least one game in hand. So although, listen, we are three points behind Chelsea and Man City, they've got games in hand, which is a, a part of the reason as well why I'm covering the Chelsea-Man City game today. I think ideally for Arsenal would be Manchester City winning because even though we're three points behind City and Chelsea, City have got three games in hand and are three points clear. And let's be honest, City are going to end up, for me, in the top two this season. So I think we could do with Chelsea losing today. We're then only three points behind Chelsea on the same amount of games. As you can see, Chelsea one win from their last five as well. But we're still a long way off. You know, six points behind Tottenham, who've got a game in hand. Ten points behind Man United and Liverpool, who also have a game in hand. We've got a long way to go, you know. 19 goals conceded is probably the positive that I can look at. You know, Liverpool have conceded more goals than Arsenal this season, which is phenomenal when you think we've lost eight games. You know, we've actually got a good defensive record when you look at the rest of the league table. It's about turning defeats into draws, draws into, into victories and climbing up the table. If you look at our next two Premier League games are Crystal Palace and Newcastle at home, that for me has to be six points. You know, that has to be six points. We win those two games, then we, then we can start having the conversation. At the moment, I would say we're not top four candidates. I would say maybe top six. Win those next two games, we give ourselves a chance of top four. I'm still not saying we're going to get it. We give ourselves a chance of it. Again, we still need to go into the market as far as I'm concerned make one, possibly two signings in January. One for me would be a backup goalkeeper. Uh, big up South London's finest, he said, not negative, just being real about it. And, and that's what, you know, I always like to think I'm, I'm being real about it. I don't like to get too carried away either way, you know. Uh, Viper Vibe said, big up Curtis, bro. I hope you're safe and well. Great quality content as always. Thank you very much, bro. Um, True Word says, Arsenal Queen. I mean, listen. We've still got to win more games. You know, we've got a good opportunity now with the games we've got coming up to really get ourselves in a good position. I think if we were to win the next two games, you know, and for me, Crystal Palace and Newcastle at home has got to be two wins. I think if we can win those two games, we give ourselves a chance and get a good player in, in January to help us. Ebby said eight defeats at this stage is simply not good enough for a club of Arsenal's stature. It's true. It's true. Uh, Magisa Nicholas says, big up C. Henri and Burkamp Burkham out. Bring back the clock. Bro, we're unbeaten since Henri and Burkamp have been in it. Uh, Callum said, you missed my super chat. Let me go and scroll back through, bro. When I was um, looking at the stats, uh, I must have missed it. Let me go and get that. I, I don't want don't want people to put them in. And There you go. Found it, bro. What team would you go for with the FA Cup? Big up. Um, I think we have to change the team slightly. I think Nicolas Pepe needs game time. You know, I think he needs game time. We're, we've got a real situation on our hands with Pepe. You know, on one hand, it's a massive positive that Saka is performing so well on that right-hand side. And we're almost saying, you know what? Pepe doesn't even get in the team right now. But on the other hand, we've got a £72 million player who I believe the last two games hasn't even come off the bench. Um so for me, against Newcastle in the FA Cup, Pepe needs to start. He needs to perform. He's got to start doing something. Um, big up Callum for the super chat. Uh, Josh said Allardyce got a taste of his own medicine, 100%. He was talking smack about us before the game as well. Um, Elias uh, Hamid said, Curtis, issue is leadership. We'll be content with mediocrity. No, we can't be. We can't be. We have to demand more. QM said uh, six points off top four. We are, but as I said, all them other teams mainly have got games in hand. So I reckon by time, you know, the other teams play, you could end up seeing us, you know, nine points behind, which is a lot more difficult. But listen, just beat what's in front of us. And Gunman Khan says, forget Pepe, big C's done out here. I don't think the club can afford to just forget him. They've got to try and do something with him. So 
let's hope they can, you know, get more out of him. Uh, Nick said, only just seen your live stream. Big up yourself, Curtis. People, hit the, hit the notification bell because a lot of people are saying sometimes that, you know, um, they don't they don't get the notification to say that I'm live. So maybe you need to hit the notification bell. Big up everyone who's tuned in. Uh, South London's finest. Big up, bro. He said, like, subscribe, share. Road to 30K. Let's go, people. When I hit 25K, another giveaway. 30K, another giveaway. And hopefully I can do bigger and better ones. Uh, Kevin won this time. He got the Arsenal um, third shirt. I sent that to him. Um, so we'll, we'll get progressively bigger and better on this channel. And, uh, you know, let's do more. Uh, Hamal said, uh, are you doing a watch along for Chelsea Man City? It says on your channel, uh, big up, great win yesterday. Yeah, I am. Tune in from 4.15. It'll be my first non-Arsenal watch along. Let's see how that goes. I just want to try and open up the channel a little bit. You know, I'm even planning, you know, I want to do watch alongs in the summer for the Euros as well, international football. And I thought today, you know, let me let me do the Chelsea Man City game. It is a big game. I, I am planning on doing the Man United Man City semi final, which I think is on Wednesday. So I'm going to try and do a couple. Obviously, Arsenal do not play again until next Saturday. I think we play Newcastle in the FA Cup. Um, Tierney Henri, take a bow. Oh, mate, Tierney, what a player. I said yesterday, I think Tierney's our best left back since Ashley Cole. Um, when you look through them, Gail Cliche, uh, Andre Santos, who of course was awful, Kieran Gibbs, Nacho Monreal, um, Kalasinac, I think Tierney is the best left back since Ashley Cole. Uh, Stephen said, watching all the way from Kenya, big up Curtis, thank you for tuning in, bro. You know, QM said, Pepe for Zaha on loan. I mean, I would do the permanent swap if we could. Um, I would definitely do that. Uh, Big C, get us as guests on, bro. I am planning on doing that. Maybe I'll do that next week for the Newcastle game in the FA Cup. I want to do like um, after the game sort of fan cam. So what I'm planning on doing, the way I really want to do it, I want to try and um, put, the, put the link in the chat. Any of you want to come on, you obviously click, you'll be waiting and then try and get you on for like maybe five minutes each. Come on, give your reaction. A little bit like, you know, AFTV fan cams, if you like. But, you know, we, we do it a little bit different. Um, so if you guys would be interested in that, I may start that next week for the Newcastle game. And then you guys can get your opinions in as well. Now, Divya said, opinion on Ezzy. I think he's a baller. I don't think he'll be at Palace for too long, to be fair. Um, I think he's an absolute top quality player. His goal yesterday, he was literally just jogging past people. Um, Winfred said, how much do you think Kieran Tierney is worth? I mean, what, Chilwell costs 50 million. Tierney's better than Chilwell. He, he, he's, he's better than Chilwell. So, listen, I know Tierney is not English and, you know, people say that English players come with a premium, but Tierney for me is a 50 million pound left back. And I don't, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that. Silvino was decent as well, but and Van Bronckhorst as well. But I still think, uh, you know, Ashley Cole was definitely the best one out of the lot. Uh, fluffy fuel game in that goal from Tierney, though, was fire. Absolute banger from him on his right foot. Phone-ins are a little bit tricky. I think it will be easier for me to just add you on and just talk. If you guys don't want to show your face on StreamYard, you can just click audio and talk and it will just be a blank screen. So listen, it gives you options how you want to do it. First guest is Omar. Omar's definitely got to come on, man. Omar puts in serious work supporting the channel. Big up Kevin Amasa. He said, big up from Kenya. Big C, my favourite YouTuber. Thank you very much, bro. I appreciate you tuning in. Curtis AFTV. <laughs> hey, big up Robbie, though. Uh, I am King. Thank you for the super chat, bro. He said, Pepe isn't being judged fairly. We are judging him based on 20 and 30 minutes here and there. He can't settle in the league without a good run of games. I mean, on one hand, I'm sort of saying, you know what? I don't think he's even played five games in a row since he's been at Arsenal, Pepe, in the Premier League. But I still think he's had enough time to produce more than what he's done so far. And I, I think he definitely has to improve. Um, but I do want to see Pepe given a run. Yeah, Omar, man, you have to get involved, man. You're like, you, you know, you're an Arsenal super fan now, you know. You pop up on every channel. He puts in some serious hours, man. Big up, Omar. Listen, if you want to come on, I am going to probably start for the Newcastle game. Um, so if people want to get involved, let me know. But I'll let everyone know 
in advance. Moose says, big up, Curtis. Sorry I'm late. YouTube, man. Why is YouTube not giving people the notification? I don't know if you need to hit the notification bell as well to get that. Uh, Viper Vibe said, big up, King, with a super chat. Respect to Viper, Viper, and King. Um... Lambros123 said, I'm worried there's no rumours of us looking for a second-choice goalkeeper. We have to. We we cannot afford to get um, Leno injured or we're going to have serious problems, man. I'm telling you. You know, Renarsson is nowhere near good enough. Uh, Apima Jeffrey said, Mary is our unsung hero, our unsung man um, from Uganda. It's crazy because there were rumours at the start that we'd played, uh, that we paid, sorry, nearly fifteen million pounds for it. It then came out that apparently we paid three point five million pounds for Pablo Mari. Now, I'm starting to think that that's definitely uh, looking like a bargain. I'm not saying he's the long term solution or he's going to be a star, but it looks like a very good bit of business at the moment. You know, I know he conceded the penalty against. Um, Chelsea, but he's looked very solid the last two games. Reads the game well, brilliant in the air. Uh, I'm, I'm, look, I'm slightly optimistic now about um, Pablo Mari, just handling business well. And um, Ranjan Chetty said uh, Willock plus Nelson and 10 million gets Brendia in. Oh my days! Um, listen, I hope we get someone signed very quickly. Um, Bibek K said Curtis, I want to join as well. SDQ said I'm in. Curtis, yeah, listen, I'm going to get people involved definitely. Um, Custard Berry Tart, would you take Carlos Soli? Curtis, congrats on 20k. I honestly haven't seen enough of him. Uh, I saw that Robbie did a video about him today. I've seen a few YouTube highlights, but I definitely can't really comment on how good he is. Um, I've had him a few times on FIFA, but that's about it. Um, Curtis, I would get Watkins from Villa, top player, scored a hat trick against Liverpool, scored against us beer. Van Dijk was playing. Would our strikers score three against Liverpool? The thing with Watkins, Watkins costs, what, 30 million? He's going to cost more than that now because he's done well. And I don't think I'd pay, would you pay 40, 50 million for Watkins? I don't think I would, even though I have been impressed with him. Um, Will said, we need an experienced goalkeeper in the latter parts of their career can come in and do a job. I mean, people were talking about um, Ben Foster um, from Watford, a steady goalkeeper. Uh, Matt Ryan from Brighton, apparently he could be available you know, just someone like that who's got experience, who's reliable, but better than Ron Arson, man, you know. Can I join? Much love from Ethiopia. Yeah, listen, I'll definitely get people involved. Alvin said, I would love to join, but don't really want to show my face. This is what I'm saying, Alvin. On StreamYard, when you join the video, it gives you the option whether to just do audio or to do the video as well. So you guys who don't want to show your face, just click on audio. It'll be a blank screen. We just have the conversation. Obviously, if you do, you want you want to show and click video. So I think that's how we're going to do it. I'm looking to get that started for next week, Saturday, FA Cup. You know, our FA Cup defence starts at home to Newcastle. Um, I hope if we do buy a number 10, we don't hold back ESR. Kid's a baller. He is a baller. He's a serious, serious baller. But, um, you know, can he do it all season? You know, we've we got to have other options. He could get injured. He could get tired. Big up Buenos Aires Guna said, Curtis, what centre-back would you partner Gabriel on the right? I think at the moment, um, we've got to go with Pablo Mari. I know it's funny that people say you can't play two left-footed centre-backs. But back in the day, most people played with two right-footed centre-backs. You know what I mean? Um, so I think we can play with two left-footed centre-backs, but I still think we need to go into the market probably in the summer um, for a centre-back. I like the two the two lads at um, Leipzig, uh, Upper Meccano. Canate impressed me as well. A lot of people were actually saying he was better than Upper Meccano. I think they're quite similar. I like both of them. You know, I, I wouldn't be a bit against just getting a solid Premier League centre-back. I know sometimes... They're not glamorous. They're not really the big glamorous name that you want. But, you know, I think Lewis Dunk's a good centre-back at Brighton. He is a bit slow, I have to admit, but he's a good leader. Um, you know, sometimes that kind of centre-back can really do a job. We don't seem to go for them type of players. Uh, Nick says Ben Foster would be an excellent backup. Uh, here's Kev. Big up, Kev. Competition winner. Uh, you should get your shirt tomorrow or Tuesday, bro. I sent it. Um, on Saturday. So let me know when you get that. He says, Curtis, what about trying Willian at number 10? Uh, listen, for me at the moment, Willian's got to be on the bench. But I, I have said before, I think Willian could play in that 10 role. 
uh, maybe better than the, the left-hand side. Um, Carne O'Connor said, good afternoon, Curtis. Would you consider letting Wax come on the channel or vice versa? Me and Wax are talking. Um, I, we are going to sort that out um, where we, we do a collab. Big up Wax, a good channel as well, knows what he's talking about. So you'll see that one um, in the not-too-distant future, definitely. Canate uh, is a proper beast. Who do you think's better? Who do you think's better, Canate or um, or uh, Upper Makano? Uh, Lewis Dunk, good choice. I mean, he looked solid yesterday against Wolves, even though they did concede free. Um, Curtis, Ben White would be a better option than Dunk. Young, fast and composed. That Ben White has done well. We He has done well. You know, I think he was at Leeds, wasn't he, on loan? He, he's definitely done well. Uh, big up. Yes, it's G Med, Mr. Nice Guy. Big up, bro. Uh, Suresh said, we've got Emil Smith Rowe. He's on. Yeah, man, man, are getting the Ozil shout out for him. Tim Foyle Arsenal says, big ups, Curtis. I agree. Arsenal seem reluctant to get English players in the club for a transfer. It's crazy how, you know, I know there's an extreme, like, English tax, if you like, on these players. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's interesting now that Donkey's underrated. People are saying Upper Meccano is clear. Canate for me. Um, Canate, more of you seem to be saying, but then some of you, I think Upper Meccano is better all round. Um, Canate is more assured now, but Upper Meccano has a bigger ceiling. Yeah, Upper Meccano, at times, the one thing I would say seems a little bit rash, um, but he's, and but he is good. He's definitely good. Upper Meccano does get injured quite a lot. We have to get Basuma. That Basuma, for me, definitely somebody Arsenal should be looking to sign. You know, I have to admit, and I'm going to say this, we're going to go into the player ratings now. Um, Danny Ceballos yesterday was fantastic. He really was. He was brilliant. Um, but why does he not produce that level of performance on a more regular basis? I think moving forward, we've got to go Danny Ceballos next to um, Thomas Partey when he's back. Um, big up, Mr. C. Love the AFTV highlights. Yeah, little cheeky hat trick. Big up for that. Let's get into the player ratings. Um, chuck in your, your ratings as we're going through them. Let me know if you agree. Um, sometimes, you know, I actually, because I do the watch along, at times I feel like I haven't even watched the game as good as some of you guys have. You know, you've probably actually um, seen it better than I have. So um, let me know what you think. So we're starting goal. Uh, I've got the team up there. We're starting goal with Leno. I thought Leno was solid without being spectacular. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything unbelievable. Made a couple of good saves. I would give him a seven. I agree with you, Omar. I think seven is a good performance without doing anything wrong, anything spectacular. I'll give Leno a seven. Um, some of you giving him an eight, but I think an eight. He didn't. He made one or two re, um, good saves, but nothing unbelievable. I'm going to give Leno a seven. I don't think he really got tested massively yesterday. Let's go into the back four. We'll start with the right back, Hector Bellerin. Got booked, came off after 53 minutes. Um, was it too cold for him? You know, did he have to run off and plant the trees? You know, he knew the victory was in the bag. He said, you know, um, Daddy, Arteta, get him off. Uh, he's got trees to plant. <laughs> Bellerin, you know, no foul throws as well for Bellerin. So um, what do we give Bellerin for the, for the game yesterday? Would you give him a six or a seven? I don't think. I think he was probably a six. You know, I think when you look at it, he got took off because Mikel Arteta must have been worried that there was a possibility of him getting sent off, you know, which doesn't say a great deal about him. Um, let me just shout this. Tony G said, big up yourself, Curtis. Do a big shout out to the Oldham Gooners supporting from the Northwest. What are you saying about James Justin? He's a Luton kid. James Justin looks good, to be fair. Big up the Oldham Gooners as well. Big up Tony. Um, I'll give Hector Bellerin a six. I don't think he was terrible, but he wasn't great. Some of you giving him a five, six again. You know, the fact he had to get taken off by Daddy Artel, you know. He said, get off. You look cold. Go and get your trees planted. And uh, Tim Ford was saying change to a five. I don't think he made any mistakes, really, apart from the booking. Um, so I, I'm going to let him off with a six, you know, Bellerin. I'll give Hector Bellerin a six. Um, the left back, Kieran Tierney. Unbelievable performance yesterday. Um, I'm going to give him a nine. The reason I'm not giving him a ten 
because I think as to get a 10 as a defender, I think you have to maybe keep a top quality attacker quiet to make it a 10 on top of the great defending that, you know, that he's, that he's dealing with as well. Man said Bellerin went to put on makeup. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so yeah, for me, I would probably give Kieran Tierney a nine. Look, I know ZT15 saying it's a 10. You know, if he was playing against Mane or someone like that and he wrapped him up, I would have given him a 10. That to me is the perfect fullback um, performance. I'm going to give him a nine because of the opposition. I know that might sound harsh. I know a lot of you guys are here chucking tens out and my captain, maybe I'm doing him dirty here, you know, giving him a nine. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't think I'll give any player a ten. Um, I, I would give him a nine. I think he did the most he could do against the opposition. Um, yeah, I suppose maybe I should give him a ten when I think about it. He did everything right. But I just have this thing that, can I give you a 10 against uh I'm going to give him a 10. Let's just go for it. I suppose you can only do what's in front of you. Um, no, I'm going to give him a nine. I'm sticking to it. The opposition's too easy for him. He was great going forward. Didn't have a lot to do defensively. I'm giving him a nine. Oh, you lot are convincing me though. Top bins with his right foot. I'm out of order, aren't I? I've got to give him a 10, aren't I? Do I have to give him a 10? Let me know. Let me know. Get in the comments. Do you give Kieran Tierney a nine or do you give him a 10? Consider the opposition. I'm just thinking he's put one in the top corner with his right foot. I think I've got to put respect on his name. He's, in, he's wearing a T-shirt in the snow. I'm giving him a 10. I'm giving him a 10. I have got to put respect on his name still. If you put one in the top corner with your weaker foot as a defender, um, I'm trying to think. I'm going to give him... Mm, do I do I sit on the fence and say 9.5? <laughs> hey, Tierney was brilliant. Do you know what? I'm giving him a 9.5. I'm going to sit on the fence. The only reason I'm not giving him a 10, I think you can only give a 10 to a defender when he's actually dealt with somebody as well. You know, defensively, he had nothing to deal with. So going forward, he was, you know, he was unbelievable. Defensively, he didn't have a lot to do. I'm going to stick to my nine. I am going to stick to my nine. I almost got carried away, man. I saw all these tens flying around. I'm giving him the nine. It's probably a 9.5, but I don't do um, half. So I'll give him, I'll give him a nine. Uh, Custard Berry Tart, big up with a super chat. He said, lack of 10 for me. Man, a match. He was unreal. Hold up goals, complete performance. We'll get to lack of shortly. I'm giving him a nine. It would be a 9.5, but I'm giving him a nine. Um, Kieran Tierney, unbelievable for me. Um, and I think genuinely now you're talking about the best left back in the Premier League after um, Andy Robertson. You know, I think he's got a little bit more to do. Robertson's done it over a long period of time. Um, but definitely after that, I can't see a better left back. Who's a better left back in the Prem than him at the moment? Uh, I think a nine is fit considering the opposition. You know, one goal, one assist, great performance. Tierney, I was born in the cold. You man just adopted it. Oh, mate, that guy, it must have been summertime to him yesterday. You know, he was probably hot at one stage. Love that Scottish lad. You know, he's made, a, you know, strong stuff. Big C, bro. Um, yeah, so Kieran Tierney gets the nine. Great performance. But here's West Brom. I don't think defensively he had a lot to do. Um, people saying Luca Digny is the third left back. He is a good left back as well. Um, the two centre backs will start with Pablo Mari. I think he's starting to really string performances together. I like the way he reads the game. I like the way he um, wins his headers. He just no nonsense, you know, left footed. He plays the ball forward as well. I like the look of him. I'm not going to get carried away. You know, I compared him to Per Mertesacker the other day. I think he might actually be a little bit better than Mertesacker, if I'm honest. Um, I think he might be a little bit quicker, although that's not difficult. Because Murtasaka was unbelievably slow. Um, what do we give Pablo Mari? I think Pablo Mari and Rob Holding, we can give the same rating ultimately. Uh, I'm thinking sevens because I don't think they had a lot to deal with. He did win a lot of headers, to be fair. Um, am I being harsh giving him a seven? I'd like to give him an eight, but I just think, who did he play against? You know, we had so much possession. I think really Pablo Mari and Rob Holding is 7.5. I'm going to round them down to seven. 
I'm going to round them down to seven. Some of you saying eight, some of you saying seven, 8.5. Uh, but will he be bench when Gabriel returns? I think he'll play next to oh, Majestic T is never going to let me get away with this. Old squad fodder. Great memory, by the way. I said that once and you've never forgotten it. Um, squad fodder Pablo Mari, as I called him. Uh, I'm giving him a seven. You're saying eight because of the snow. That's a good point. Difficult conditions, to be fair. Um, they're probably 7.5. Was Pablo Murray better than him? Uh, than Rob Holding? There's people here saying Pablo eight, seven. Uh, Pablo eight, Robbo seven. Um, I think Pablo Murray was maybe slightly better, you know. I may give Pablo Murray the eight, you know. He's been out for a while, playing in the snow. I think he looks a little bit calmer on the ball. I'm going to give Pablo Murray the eight, Rob Holding a seven. Uh, I think that's fair. I do think he looked a little more composed on the ball. Um, this is my worry, though. You know, will Pablo Murray, will he be found lacking when he comes up against pace? When you uh, lack that pace, we've almost got to play quite deep, you know, and hit teams on the counter-attack. Uh, I, I do think if we play a high line and you start seeing us against you know, Jamie Vardy and, and, you know, strikers that can really run is when I will see how good he really is. Um, G. Sean said, seven is fair, Curtis. Big up yourself, bro. Always a big fan of your show. Thank you very much. Um, Holding should get benched instead of Murray when Gabriel comes back. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Pablo Escobar, they're calling him eight. Rob Bolden, seven. <laughs> oh, dear, man. Yeah, I would give him the eight because I do think his passing is a little bit better. Um, what's wrong with having Mary and Gabriel, even though... Listen, people have this theory that you can't have two left-footed centre-backs, even though loads of people have had two right-footed centre-backs. Um, but listen, it is what it is. Let's get into the midfield. This one's a little bit tricky for me. Granite Xhaka. What would you give Granite Xhaka? I think he was steady, but not spectacular. I don't think he did anything great. I don't want to diss him and say he was poor. I just can't remember him doing much good. He kept it ticking. Am I being unfair giving him a six? Let me know. Let me know. I would say Granite Xhaka was a six. I don't think he was bad. I don't think he did anything, really. He just kept the ball moving. What do you guys think? People chucking fives at Xhaka. Um, if Mario has pace around him, he should be okay. Positioning is key. People giving Xhaka six, 6.8, a four, a four again, a five, seven. Turkish said five. I'm just trying to think. I don't. I think five is to me. I, I I'm always a person. I look at a six as average. You know, I think five is slightly below average. Um, he did nothing. Like, I'm trying to think what he did. He didn't do anything wrong, really. But he didn't really do anything right. I, I I'm gonna be kind and give him a six because. To give him a five, I would have to say that he did something wrong. Uh, I'm not a fan of Granit Xhaka. You guys know that, but I'm not going to. He didn't really make a mistake. He kept it ticking. He was part of a good, solid performance, and uh, I'm going to give him a six. What do you guys think? Some of you are giving him seven. He played the ball forward. Some of you are giving it a five. I see what you mean. I think he's a six. He played sideward. He did nothing wrong. He did nothing particularly right. And he completed 90 minutes without getting sent off. Um, his partner yesterday, I think his performance went quietly unnoticed. Not by everyone, but I'm saying a lot of people were talking about other people. I think Danny Sabayos was superb yesterday, honestly. It, it's so frustrating, Danny Sabayos, because at times you see performances from him and you think, there's a player in there. There's a player. Danny Sabayos, to me, passes the ball as good as probably better than any midfielder in our team. You could argue Thomas Partey, but we haven't seen enough of him um, to see his passing all the time. Danny Sabas was fantastic yesterday. You know, for a guy who's come from Spain as well, you know, a lot less physical league, Danny Sabas likes to mix it, you know, which I like. Um, did you see his celebrations when we scored? The man's on his knees pumping fists. I thought Sabas was superb yesterday. I, I, listen, up there for me. I reckon he's got to be an eight at least, Danny Sabayos. I thought he was fantastic. Uh, I'm surprised that some of you are not getting... I mean, some people here saying um, 
giving him lower ones. He did get booked, so that's probably the reason. I mean, you're giving Tobias a five here, no chance. Tobias was good yesterday, man, seriously. Some of the times I see him just turn out, little ball over the top. I'm giving him an eight. I'm giving him an eight. Listen, the opposition was poor, but he did create chances. He moved the ball forward. He got stuck in. Um, I'm giving Danny Sabayas an eight. I thought he was up for it. He was up for it yesterday. Um, let's get into the front four. This always seems very enjoyable when it comes to the front four. Let's start with, uh, I think that's right as well. Sabayas, eight, great quality, but it is West Brom. That's what we're going to say. Um Let's talk about Emil Smith Rowe. Baller. People are calling him Emil De Bruyne. Like, you know, you know, Arsenal fans, we love to get carried away. People calling the man De Bruyne. Do you know the bit what I loved about Smith Rowe yesterday? One little moment. The goal that Saka scored. Lacazette whips it round the corner into him. He controls it with the outside of his left foot, just straight in front of him. And just lays it across. That first touch, I promise you, that first touch is very difficult, very difficult to do. He makes it look like it's nothing, absolutely nothing. What a baller. He's made such a difference to our team, you know. And uh, listen, I, I'm proud. I'm, I actually feel proud of him as a young player to come in and put them performances in. Uh, what would you give Smith Rowe? I'd probably give him. Or would I give Smith Rowe an eight? Am I being unfair? I'd give him an eight. Uh, Carly Lito, Curtis is a Liverpool fan. Think you have to look at Smith Rowe. He's a talent, has a bag of potential. Uh, then Kai and the likes of Real Madrid and Bayern are going to look at him. So he's saying he looks better than Kai Havertz. He said, listen, he ain't going to know Bayern or anyone, man. He's an Arsenal boy. You're giving him nine, uh, eight. What are you giving him? Eight again. I think it's probably another 8.5 moment. The De Bruyne of Croydon, says Mo. <laughs> what are we giving him? I thought he was brilliant yesterday. Uh, again, linked up play, quick on the counter-attack. I'm giving him a nine. I think to keep producing these performances. No, I'll give him an eight. He came off a sub, actually. I'm going to give him an eight yesterday. Uh, I thought it was another great performance. I, this is the one I would agree with. I would say it's an eight, a borderline nine. It's probably an 8.5, but I'm going to give him an eight. Um, but again, another fantastic performance from Emil Smith-Rowe. Um, so I'll give him an eight. Bakaya Saka, I mean, he's just on fire, that kid. You know, another goal played a part in Lacazette's goal with the cross. He was just, that kid is just something else. He's been player of the season for me, Saka. You know, I think Gabriel as well. But I think Saka's just maintained that level. Even when he played for England, he was brilliant. Um, another great performance. As you say, man, doing it away from home as well. Home and away, just performing, just fearless performance. Um, I would probably give Saka a nine, if I'm being honest. Put a great ball in in the first half that I think Aubameyang should have got to. Um, he put the cross in with his right foot. They doubled up on him to keep him off his left. He goes on his right, whips it in. You know, Smith Rowe has the shot after it hits the post and Lacazette scores. He was fantastic yesterday. They had to literally kick him off that off the pitch. Um, absolutely brilliant player. He's just something else. You're right. The kid is special. Just hope we don't burn him out. We have to look after him. We have to look after him. Um, but every time he plays, I'm just impressed. I mean, for 19 years of age, Unbelievable talent. Nine out of ten for me. Incredible performance. And um, listen, we paid £72 million for Pepe. Saka came out of the youth team. Saka looks like the £72 million winger. Um, and he's dominating on the right-hand side. You know, last year he was brilliant at left-back, left-wing. He's just fantastic. The kid is special. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Um, I feel a bit sorry for him. He's getting a lot of criticism from people saying, get rid of him, bench him. He's washed up. He's done out here. All I can say is this. And someone said this to me perfectly yesterday. If our fan base are dealing with Granit Xhaka, Hector Bellerin, players like that being in the Arsenal team, think how poor they've been at Arsenal. Think how many mistakes they've made at Arsenal, right? And they're just quietly being allowed in the team, right? I'm not saying we want them in the team, but they're, they're there. The least I think we can do 
is support Aubameyang. You know, I think people are on him. Look, Omar saying he's finished. I don't think he is. I don't. I don't think he suits the way we're playing at the moment. You know, because I've always said Aubameyang is not a great dribbler. He is not a guy you can give the ball to and he's going to dribble past three or four and score. He needs to run onto the end of things. At the moment, the way we're playing, we've got runners. Smith Rowe, Saka, you know, when Martinelli plays, those three can all dribble at pace. You've then got Lacazette in front of them, who's the link man. So when Aubameyang comes in, it's like he's kind of the odd one out with how we're playing at the moment. And he's struggling. He needed a goal yesterday. You know, it won't have pleased him to see Arsenal score four. He doesn't score. He was the weakest link of our attack. Fans are getting on to him, but we've got to stick with him. It's FA Cup next week. Hopefully he gets a goal. Um, what do we give Aubameyang? I'll give him six for working hard. Um, it's a tough one. It is a tough one because when I think about it, I think he was actually below par. Um, but he tried. He put in a great shift in the snow. Things were going against him. I'm going to give him a six. Um, someone just said there brilliantly, actually, um, he needs to adapt. And I agree with that. I think he does need to adapt. Um, I agree with that as well. So I've Omar, you're too harsh. We've relied on him for three seasons. We can't rely on him for three seasons and then turn on him in 17 games. He's been injured. We've been out of form. We haven't created. He's not playing great. I'll admit that. I'm not saying he's playing great, um, but let's not turn on him, man. The system just doesn't favour him, and he's struggling within it. Um, but I do agree. I've lost that comment. But as you said, and I said this before, you know, Pep turned up at Man City and Aguero had to adapt. And Aguero is one of the best strikers in Premier League history. So Aubameyang has to learn to adapt. You know, he really does. Um, and I agree, he did put in a lot of work yesterday. So that's why I'm going to you know, defend him. Omar's saying, I don't think so. I think we are being harsh. Give him a little time. Listen, you always have to adapt, you know. Your game might have to, that's what the top players do. You know, look at Ronaldo, he was the flying winger, then he kind of went centrally and became the goal-scoring striker. Messi went from the right winger to like the cam attacking midfielder. Players adapt, man. Um, you know, so listen, as you said here, Aubameyang is trying but we have to defend him. You don't need that negative energy when you've carried a team for two or three years and you've had a quiet 15, 16 games and the fans are hammering you. Let's support him. Even if he's on the bench coming on doing his thing, man, he's going to be an asset to us. Um, Lacazette through the middle. I thought he was brilliant again yesterday. Um, great link-up play in the build-up to Saka's goal. Got his goal in the second half. Got two goals in the second half. Great ball from Tierney, kind of hit him on his leg and went in. And then the first goal was obviously the rebound after Smith Rowe's goal. Lacazette, five goals in his last four games. Um, four goals, sorry, in his last three games. He's doing the business. He's doing the business, um, Lacazette. Um, so... He obviously scored against Chelsea, scored against Man City, scored against Brighton, scored two. Yeah, five. Five, sorry. Yeah, five goals for Lacquer. I'm giving Lacquer a nine. I think he's on fire. I think you put runners around him. We're starting to see the Lacazette at Lyon. I don't want to get carried away. As I said, it's five, six games. He's got to produce this for 20 games till the end of the season. You know, but with runners around him, and this is what I'm saying, Arsenal fans. Six weeks ago, most Arsenal fans would have said, lack of threat, lack is not good enough, sell him in the summer, his time's up, Aubameyang, Aubameyang, Aubameyang. Now, look how quick things can change. Five goals, and now we all rate Lacazette. Now we all want him in the team. Now people want Aubameyang out. So listen, stick by our players. These guys are quality players as well. You know, I think Lacazette was fantastic. My striker, easy 10 Everyone was writing off Lacazette not so long ago. He's a different player with the young guns, man. Trust me, man. The young books have given him energy, man. Big up 1-1 as well in the building. He says, come on, everyone. Hit the like button. The ratio is ridiculous. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button if you haven't already, even if you do it on your way out. Um, the support is much appreciated. You can see Lacazette is enjoying himself. You've got to understand, Lacazette is 29. He does not want to run around like a lunatic now. These youngsters need to do the running. You know, and that's why he's thriving. 
Love Lacazette and Aubameyang. We have to. We have to. Lacquer is a baller, one of the best players we have. I think he's a very intelligent player. You know, his link-up plays, first touch, all of that is superb, man. Would you give him a new contract? Now, this is a great question from Winfred, right? Lacazette, 29, 150 grand a week. Year left on his deal in the summer. If he continues this level of form, what do you do with Lacazette in the summer with a year left? What you don't want is Lacquer running down that last year of his contract and leaving for nothing. You've got two choices. You sell him with a year left on his deal to get some money for him, or do you give him maybe a two-year extension? That is a difficult one to deal with, especially if he finishes the season well. Omar, no mercy, just says no deal. Uh, most of you saying no, sell in the summer, no way. Thing is, if he finishes this season really well, the club aren't going to want to sell him, but... It's a tough one, you know. Can Martinelli maybe play through the middle? I would give Lacazette a new contract if he continues to perform. No new contract, move him on. How about I would potentially listen if he if he continues with this form, I would maybe try and give him a one year extension or two year give him a new two year deal, you know. So he's got two years left on his deal. I wouldn't give him like a long term contract, um, but you know. I can understand why people would say maybe let him go because it's difficult. He's, he has been quiet for a while, but he is playing well now. Sell Aubameyang, not Lacazette. Wow. I think we struggled to sell Aubameyang now. Nearly 31, 300 grand a week, out of form. Who's going to buy him? You know, that's what I'm saying. We've got to stick by him. Uh, David said, even Turkish gave Tierney a 10, my guy. Yeah, I get it. You know, I'm not easy with 10s, you know. 10s for me is like... Especially as a defender, I, I do look at who you're playing against. Going forward, he was unbelievable. You know, defensively, he was solid. We didn't really have anyone to play against. Uh, if he did that against a live wire, Adama Traore, St. Maximum, Mane, Salah, Mares, I'm giving him a 10. Maybe I'm being harsh, but that's where I'm at. Um... But listen, Lacazette, fantastic. Nine out of 10. Lacazette and Kieran Tierney for me. Man of the match, I would probably... Who would you give man of the match to out of Lacazette or Tierney? Or would you give it to someone else? Um, I think that maybe Tierney was man of the match. Um, I did think Lacazette, he did set the tempo, but I think because Tierney got the first goal, right foot top corner as well, Great ball in for Lacazette's goal. I think I'll just edge it and give it to Kieran Tierney, to be honest. As I've said, Kieran Tierney, for me, is the best um, is the best left-back we've had at the club since Ashley Cole. Um, I was going to give it Lacazette, to be honest, but I think I just edge with Tierney this time um, because of the goal on his right foot and the cross as well is unbelievable. Um, some of you saying Smith Rowe, most of you saying Kieran Tierney, some of you saying Lacko. I think one thing that's great is just it's nice we can have the argument about who the man of the match should be. Um, the subs who came on, Ainsley Maitland Niles came on in uh, his girlfriend's tights. I mean, he came on looking so rags, you know. I know this is the Premier League, bro. You're wearing Christmas tights. Jeez, Ainsley was just bantering when he came on, you know. I think maybe he didn't expect to come on. I mean, he was okay when he came on, but for the tights alone, I might have to give him a five. Them tights are terrible, bro. You can't be coming on looking like that, looking like, you know, you're in your onesie from Christmas. Man said, give Ainsley a four because of the tights. You can't roll on on tights like that, bro. I don't know what you're doing. I'll give him a five for the tights, you know. Ainsley's a bad man. Now, he didn't do nothing wrong. I'll give him a six. You know, I give him a six. He was okay. Um, didn't do nothing wrong. Willian came on. Willian had two shots on target, people. The world's going crazy. Willian had shots on target. And said, you know, he's in a big C. Oh, man, I don't give out them big ratings easy, you know. Yo, man had, man had the tights on with the skinny legs, you know. White tights with skinny legs. It's not a good look, my guy Ainsley, bro. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you have Jamaican nationality and you're representing like that. Come on, bro. i got to give you a five still, you know. You can't come on and, and look like that. You know what I mean? 
it weren't a bad performance, but you can't roll on with tights like that. Man said he's Nan's tights. Um, Willian, I mean, he came on and gave the ball away about four times, but did go on a couple runs at the target. I can't give him more than a five. He was wasteful in possession. I know people are seriously getting on to Willian. Again, all I can say to fans is we're not happy with him. But I think we got to, again, we've got to try and support him while he's here. You know, if he leaves, cool would diss him and say he was garbage. But while he's here, he's not, he's not gonna, he's not going anywhere for now. Uh, Curtis is a hard man to please. No, but I feel like I've been all right with the ratings. Everyone got decent ratings. Ainsley got a, a five because you're wearing your nan's tights that you got at Christmas, man. You have to go down in the estimation for that. I give Willian a four, four, five. He didn't do anything particularly good. He had a couple of shots that were half decent. Um, uh, Willock came on. I don't know where Joe Willock's at right now. I've got to be honest. Um, people say Willian's acceleration is decent for his age. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Joe Willock for me is, he's just doing nothing at Arsenal at the moment. He comes on for the last 15, 20 minutes, runs around, doesn't really do anything. You know, I think he needs a loan move or something. Needs football, you know. It's very difficult to come out of under-23 football and go into the first team and thrive unless you've got that maturity in your game. Sometimes you need to go on loan somewhere and get 30 games, even if it's the championship, you know, to understand men's football. Joe Willock, again, I thought he was poor. I don't want to hammer him, but I, I give him a four. Just doesn't really bring anything when he comes on the pitch. Um, Eddie and Ketio, who didn't come on yesterday, I thought he was terrific again, Eddie. Um, consistent performances from him. Uh, I'll give Eddie and Ketio a nine as well for not coming on and messing up yet another great performance. So big up Eddie. I think he's ran out of credit. No more phone call celebrations for Eddie. I'm joking, by the way. I always have a little joke about Eddie. Some people don't like it, but now nah, Eddie, man, I'll tell you what, one thing that disappointed me yesterday was uh, Pepe not coming on. Two games in a row, Pepe, unused substitute. Maybe in the Brighton game, you can understand it because it's a tight game. Maybe you're not expecting him to do the defensive work. So you leave him out of there. But, you know, I think yesterday at 4-0, I would rather see Pepe coming on than Willian. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I was disappointed. It's clear that Arteta does not like... Um, Nicholas Pepe, I think they'll have a decision to make come the summer. C says, big up Curtis. Will it, Willock is a weird one, to be honest. He's good at times, but consistently misses sitters. He's definitely got talent, but he's just not producing it, man. Really not. Uh, and that's the frustrating thing. I don't like Eddie. I just don't rate him, you know. I do not rate him. Um, but listen, he might become a player. You never know. Sports genius, Curtis, would you still bring in an attack in mid? I would, yeah, I would. I don't think as a football club you should sit there and go, right, we've got Smith Rowe, we don't need nothing else. No, I think we should look at other options. So, listen, I, I want Sabitzer. Honestly, I like Sabitzer, but I think he'll be very difficult to get in this window. Um, people saying Willian's better than Pepe, I don't think so. Uh, I've had enough of seeing Willian already, you know. He's definitely been a flop. We should buy Calvert-Lewin in the summer. He would cost a fortune, bro. English, 23. And, you know, Everton have got dough. He's going to cost, what, 60 million, I reckon. You know, he ain't coming on the cheap. Um, Leicester are winning as well. They've just scored. Um, who's that who scored? Madison, I believe. Um, Brandt, Brandt is okay. As I said, my problem with Brandt, he's inconsistent, you know. Uh, he's definitely got talent, Julian Brandt. Oh, Madison with the goal there for Leicester. Um, Brandt's definitely got talent. It's just, you know, <laughs> Eddie Nocky. Oh, man, geez. Um, yeah, I'm not sure with Brandt. Not fully sure uh, about him, but he is a talent. Patrick Kenny said, love the channel, Curtis. Do you think Pepe's future here is in doubt? I think it is. You know, I do like him as a player, but I just think he's struggling, man. He is struggling. I don't think Arteta's rating him. Shane said, Curtis with Partey and Gabby back in the team. Who drop, Who drops from the bench? Only nine left on the bench. It's interesting. I mean, I mean, let's just have a quick look. Who was on the bench yesterday who didn't come on? I mean, 
Renarsson will be there, obviously. Um, Pepe, Luis, Elneny, Willock, Conchetti, and Martinelli. You know, you've got to bring probably as a centre mid, you might have to take Willock out of the team or Elneny off the bench to get Partey. Partey obviously will go back into the 11, drop Xhaka on the bench. And then I'm probably bringing Gabby in and you've got to take out maybe Eddie and Ketty or David Luiz, really, um, to get Gabby back in the team. I just want to see Balogun on the bench as well, man, instead of Eddie and Ketty. Um, Dupe T said, uh, Kurt, it's 2021, just started. Don't kill me already, out of credit. Man, you know Eddie's run out of credit, man. Uh, Madison 1-0, yeah, good finished. Uh, Aubameyang and Calvert-Lewin, straight swap. I don't think Everton would accept that, you know. He's like seven or eight years younger than Aubameyang. Grealish or Havertz, if you could choose. Grealish for me, bro. I'm telling you, he knows the Premier League. So there's a possibility Havertz might not work. I do think Havertz is a baller, i got to be honest. But I'm taking Grealish. You know, no no adjustment period. Hayland FC seems to be the future big C. Let's hope so, man. Let's hope so. Uh, and I am going to wrap up here. Don't forget this video was sponsored by the guys at One Football. Link is in the description below. Go and download that for all your latest team news, live scores and transfer updates. Big up one football. Um, I will be back 4.15 for my first non-Arsenal live stream. Chelsea against Man City. Come and join me for that. Obviously, Arsenal fans, we're probably hoping that Chelsea get beat. I know we're three points behind City and Chelsea, but City have got three games in hand on Arsenal. And I think City will get away from us towards the end of the season anyway let's pull Frank Lampard and Chelsea back into that mix and see if we can catch them um, as I said trial and error um, let's see how it goes a lot of people have been asking me for to do uh, watch alongs to non-Arsenal games so we'll see how that goes come and join me at 4.15 subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit the like button on the way out I will be back at 2 p.m tomorrow as well for more Arsenal content take care everyone enjoy the rest of your Sunday have a great day bless Thank you.